These are devices that are intended to let you figure out for yourself how some of this stuff is working. Everything here you can understand within a minute or two if you give it a chance. And things get a bit more and more complicated as you work your way across the room. My name is Marissa and I am having so much fun I'm learning how the games work. I don't know, it's just very interesting to me. This is all the basics of electromechanical pinball. There are no chips in any of this stuff except for one or two exceptions. It's all electromechanical relays, solenoids, steppers, things like that. So I'm gonna talk about the roto unit. So I had a Gottlieb Circus and as you hit the ball, this act would activate. So this will this will simulate the ball hitting the unit. So as you hit it, it rotates. I went and was playing games out there, and then I was like, wait, I want to come back and look at the mechanism again. So that's why I came back and looked at the flipper again, and I was asking him. Yeah, and it, as he said, like they go from hard, easy to harder, so they get a little confusing which over there. Like, but um, which one do you like the best? I mean, I just like from the beginning just to understand like a solenoid is what makes a lot of these games, a lot of the parts work. So this one tells you what the bumper, the jet bumpers do. So you push the, once you push the button, the ball starts moving towards this yellow, this white part. And what it does is it signals this leaf, this leaf um, right here. The, it signals to it right here that it's been activated. So that activates this, which pushes the ball away. So that's what a bumper does in a real game. So as I hit this button, we get the light, and then we hit it again. It goes down. Impressive. So this is a basic flipper and coil assembly, which is really cool. You know, I'm putting together the free play console room. This is amazing. Yeah. So Our how friend... many consoles did you bring for this event? Uh, you know, I brought um, about six. Basically. Well, Paul approached me and said that he wanted to do kind of what we do for other gaming shows, where we bring a mobile museum of video game culture, just for everyone to come and see the games we grew up with and the games that we love that got us into video games or into pinball or into arcades. So he contacted me and said, let's put something together. And I said, well, let me go through what games I have. I will we'll collaborate who brings what. We got here, we set everything up, and yeah, so far we're loving what we see. Okay, so we tried to you know, vary the range of different uh, genres of years based on the generation. So we have games from Intellivision from back in like the, you know, the early 80s, late 70s to an Xbox 360, which is sort of the 2000 era. Um, but we have everything from minis, like Neo Geo, to like GameCubes and uh, Xboxes. So we're trying to you know, keep the retro feel going, but also have you know, the older and the past so the families can get together and uh, play together and then have great memories as they did when they were kids to play with their kids. So we keep the generations going. Yeah, we're in, we're, in, um, we're kind of like a secret at the Pinball Expo. We have some good traffic. We have, constantly. And everyone has been very thankful. All, all these pinball uh, fans, they come here, they walk in and they're in shock. He said, this is wonderful. Thank you for doing this. And, um, and I actually you say, say, you're welcome. No problem, anytime. So here we have a Q-Bird for the Atari 2600 on a little retrocade. Um, we had Jeff Lee who created and designed the uh, images and the art for a Q-Bird, play Q-Bird on the Atari 2600, which is his first time that he has played this version of the game in what, how many 35 something years. So it was pretty epic to have Jeff Lee play his own game on the 2600. So yeah, it was pretty exciting. I'm having a great time. This is my first expo. I'm having a blast. I'm meeting so many new people such as yourself, new friends, making new people who are becoming family. 
this has been an excellent time and I recommend that everyone come next year. tournament of death going on right behind me. You go room by room trying to get a high score while monsters and distractions try to take you into a different realm. If you can make it through alive, which most people do not ever make it out alive, you can win huge prizes and impress all your friends. Unfortunately, you won't, because if you beat my score ever, I will definitely make sure you will never come out alive. Just want to come on in? Let me show you the way. Right here is a graveyard that we had professionally installed that includes the dead bodies of people who did beat my score. Get on in there. <laughs> Yes, yes, please, please suffer. Your pain is my pleasure. You will never escape hell, but if you do, great pleasures await you. Gentlemen, you are entering a new room of pleasure, and I must warn you, try not to stare. Oh, he's in it. Well, hello there. Are you going to give me a jackpot? Quite an interesting journey, for sure. This is our first time out of Denver, Colorado. We've done this for eight years now, and uh, we never thought we would actually take it on the road to a whole new city, and somehow we did. So that's kind of our whole thing. We This is a pop-up haunted house, and uh, it's it's just a crazy ride, just putting it together. But it's um, it's been amazing being in a totally different environment with totally new people and getting like really amazing uh, responses from just a ton of people that we never have met before. It's, it's been awesome. <laughs> 